Howdy folks. Welcome to Maverick Gunworks channel. Today we're going to talk about the Smith & Wesson Model 3 1873 Schofield. We have a commemorative model here to talk about today. All right? And here's a picture of that fine gun that is made in the U.S. This is a commemorative for 150 years of Smith & Wesson firearms that started business in 1852. All right, and here we have the Schofield commemorative. We see from 1852, inscribed in gold, or Smith & Wesson, to 2002. All right, a lot of, a lot of really fine scroll work around the uh, gold inlaid. We we'll move up a little bit to our cylinder. We have a really nice gold inlaid of the revolver on the cylinder with some nice scroll work. As we come down to the frame, on this side we have a uh, sculpture, I guess you say, headshot of uh, Daniel B. Wesson. On this side, a lot of nice scroll work, fine uh, engraving on the side of it. And we're going to roll over to the other side, take a look at what, this, what it shows us. As we go back to the, the frame, we have Horace Smith on this side. Same nice scroll work. And as our scroll work on the cylinder continues, all the way around the cylinder, and going on down to the barrel, we have again the 1852 to 2002. And this being a 45 Smith & Wesson caliber firearm. Alrighty. <clears throat> Before we get into anything else, we have, uh, I'm using rubber glove today because I don't want any fingerprints on this gun. This is a commemorative. It is as new condition. It has never been fired. The cylinder has been rotated a couple of times just to ensure that the gun has, is functional. But we're going to keep it, uh, keep it as pristine as we can. This is definitely a uh, collector piece. All right, to open the, the gun and uh, make sure we confirm that there is no cartridge in the, in the chambers, we're going to open our top latch. This is a, a top latch break open type revolver. We'll pull our top latch back and we pull the cylinder down, pull the barrel down rather. As we pull the barrel down, if you watch the cylinder ejector, we'll push out the cartridges. It will continue to fold it down. If you think about the original uh, usage of this gun, back in the uh, late 1800s, the cowboys would have done the same thing. They would pop their uh, cartridges out like this. As they continue to eject the cartridges, fold it on down, and the uh, ejector pops back into the cylinder where they can reload and then be able to close the gun and continue firing. Ready? Very tight fit on this gun because it is, it is you say, brand new. Another a couple things about this gun, we have the uh, case colored trigger guard, the case colored trigger, case coloring also on the hammer and on our action latch on top of the barrel. Ready? And we'll just do a quick uh, review of our typical cleaning process as we open the gun, pull it up, we run our solvent patch down through each hole of our cylinder. Also line your cylinder up with your barrel and run a patch down through the barrel. And we'll let it stand as we usually do for five minutes or so. Follow that up with a clean dry patch and finally a damp oil patch trying to uh, leave a thin film of lubrication and not puddled up so that we uh, don't attract dirt to it any more than necessary. Anything further than that, you would end up um, opening the gun up, taking the, the uh, components off, out from the inside, taking the side plate off, cleaning the internal parts and uh, lubrication as we would uh, with a cylinder and barrel. Alrighty. And a little bit more about uh, the history of this gun. They were made from 1870 to 1915. Um, the Russian Army used these guns in 1871. There's a seven inch standard barrel. That's what this gun is a representation of. Ready? And they were originally used by uh, different militaries around the world, including our US Cavalry. They were chambered in everything from a 44 Smith & Wesson was original chambering in them. 44 Russian chamber when the uh, Russian 
government ordered some from Smith and Wesson for their military. There was a 44 Henry chambering, a 44 40, a 42 44, a 38 44, and a 45 Schofield. And there may have been other other ones uh, I'm not aware of, but that's that's the biggest of them anyway. The uh, Russian uh, government had ordered uh, a good number of these guns, I think over 3,000 of them, for the use of, by their military. And what they ended up doing was uh, employed some of their engineers and gunsmiths and uh, ended up copying the parts from the Smith & Wesson. And uh, because of the, their, their quality of production they had themselves, ended up uh, not in not paying for the guns that they had bought from Smith & Wesson. They kind of hoodooed Smith out of uh, a lot of their uh, revenue from doing such a thing. And during that time frame, Smith was uh, Smith & Wesson were in deep trouble financially because of what the uh, Russian government had done to them. They were able to hang on, obviously, hang on for business and uh, finished out with uh, bringing these guns to the cavalry, for our U.S. cavalry, where they were initially uh, used in our military. Okay, as they got to be used in our uh, in our fields of battle, there was a colonel. I'm sorry, colonel. It was, it was a major at the time, uh, Major George Schofield. He noticed some improvements that could be made with the revolver, and as his improvements were incorporated into what Smith and Weston had already uh, produced. The gun became known as the Smith & Wesson Model 3 Schofield. It was chambered in uh, a 45 uh, Smith & Wesson 45 Schofield cartridge at the time. That ended up being a cartridge that was slightly shorter than the 45 Colt they were already using in the military. And because of that, the Schofield models could not fire the existing 45 Colt ammo. However, the 45 Colt revolvers could still use the 45 uh, Schofield ammo. So because of the uh, ammunition conflict, the military ended up discontinuing use of this firearm and it became available as a, a military surplus. Uh, around 1898, the, the army ended up selling these guns off as surplus uh, to the public. It ended up being a lot of uh, companies like uh, Wells Fargo uh, in the security business bought up a bunch of these guns and had the barrels cut off to five inches instead of seven, made them a little more uh, uh, user-friendly as far as uh, concealment goes for their officers. And um, if you can run across a firearm like that that has the original um, Wells Fargo stamping on it, which there are copies out there, so that's something you have to be very careful of as far as a collector goes. They would be much more valuable actually than the original, uh, just the plain versions that were not of, of the uh, Wells Fargo version. <clears throat> and uh, some interesting interesting things about this firearm history wise it was used by a lot of the uh, cowboys of the day ended up being uh, one of the guns that won the west I guess you'd say um, folks like Jesse James um, well, John Wesley Hardin Pat Garrett uh, Virgil and Wyatt Earp Billy Kid, and even uh, Teddy Roosevelt used these guns right. and a little bit uh, more as far as the cultural significance of the gun, we move up a little earlier, I'll say or later, I guess, as far as our, our history goes. In a 1992 movie by Clint Eastwood called The Unforgiven, a cowboy movie, there was a character in there called the Schofield Kid. It was named after the Model 3 a revolver that we're looking at today. And uh, lastly, as far as our uh, uh, cultural significance, I guess you say, about the gun, I'll get this information from my son who is a, a video gamer. He tells me that uh, if you folks play a video game called Red Dead Redemption 2, you can find the Schofield Revolver in the city of Valentine. So if you look through the window in the back of the doctor's office and you can rob the back room and grab the Schofield out of the box on the table. Otherwise, you'll see if you're gonna play the villain in that uh, video game, you can rob the uh, box and get the gun. Otherwise, you'll have to level up to be able to uh, have access to the firearm later in the game. Um, this gun was also reproduced in 2000 
the 2003 by Smith and Wesson. That's what this gun. That's where this particular model came from. The reproduction that as uh, it would have been from Smith and Wesson. There are other companies like uh, Uberti and uh, some of the other manufacturers in Italy, especially that make copies of this gun. But this example we have today is a genuine Smith and Wesson reproduction to commemorate the 150 year anniversary of the company. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at our Smith & Wesson commemorative. And thank you folks for watching Maverick Gunworks channel.